What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for coming back, for tuning in, and yeah, for supporting your Capoeira school. We we cannot be a community if we don't have schools, and then so a participation of everybody is super, super important. From the very person that just walked through the door to the message that has 50 dozen, hundreds of years doing Capoeira. <laughs> so today, today is a very important uh, episode. Uh, there's um, there's some kind of like still some people don't really like to talk, talk too much about that, and then and then it's, it's a taboo, kind of quote unquote taboo in the in the Capoeira community. But uh, I have a really really good friend of mine, a brother of mine uh, that I just uh, met him not too long ago. Uh, to talk about this, he has some really good experience about this. He has a few uh, business experience, which is the topic of today, the the business related with Capoeira. And he has some business outside of Capoeira, and of course, the Capoeira business to, to his own school and, you know, expanding his school. So let me please bring you back. Contra Mestre Miko, how you doing, brother? Good, man. Thanks for having me back, Kashiji. It's, uh, it's sure. great being here. I yeah, love man. our talks. Yeah, man, we we can we can talk for hours. I'm very happy you told me that you don't have anything else, just the podcast, so we can be here for like three hours. <laughs> That's great, man. I'm in. I'm in for it. I'm in for it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say, uh, you know, in your intro there, you said uh, taboo about the about the business, and that's actually well, I was actually really excited when we first met. We were talking about music and business, right? Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. really happy that you brought me on first for music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mostly because of that taboo, you know, like. Yeah. I love the business part, uh, yeah. but you know you're in, you're in the art, and, and you don't want to get known to just be the business guy, you know. Yeah, for sure, and for I, sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Definitely want to talk about how to balance that as we as yeah. we go through the interview. Yeah, for sure. And I also, I want to put a little disclaimer here that you know we we the the purpose of this episode is pretty much to to bring to you or for whoever is listening to this our personal experiences and the things that we have. Uh, pass through and then how we learn for whatever we experience we have. So it's not pretty much, it's no advice for for you to do the exact same things we, do, we are saying here. It's pretty much to capture the the experience that we had before and then people that we know and et cetera, et cetera. So it's just like a little disclaimer there that it's not a, a legal advice. <laughs> uh, yeah, good point. I'm glad you, glad you put that out there. <laughs> for sure. yeah. Not not legal advice. Not yeah. j- just talking about experience. Definitely. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah. to get started on this topic, so the the from my personal perspective, right? So the uh, Capoeira has to to is a is a huge fan of possibilities, right? So we mm-hmm. have. Uh, the the culture part, of course, that something that's very very important for us as a teachers to preserve and to keep there. Doesn't matter whatever you do with capoeira, always try to preserve preserve the traditions, the culture, the and respect everything that is capoeira related. But when mm-hmm. it comes to teaching and then to expand your capoeira, is extremely extremely important for us to understand how business works. From my uh, perspective, uh, perspective opinion. What, what do you think? I I agree a hundred percent. In fact, I was talking, uh, messaging on WhatsApp with a with another friend today about events and everything. And one one thing that I firmly believe is that the better job you do with the business means you're gonna reach more people, right? Because your 100%. business is doing better. Oh. So you're going to have to get the things more organized. You have to be a be- a, a great teacher. You have to have a safe environment. And all these things are going to help you reach more students, whether it's kids or adults or both 100%. or community programs. So if you're better with the business, you're able to do more. You know, if you are having a, if you're really passionate, you see this all the time in Capoeira and, and other things too, other cultural arts, see people that are super passionate and, but they, they don't really put much time in the business because they're, they, uh, for whatever reason, you know, and then, um, then they might have one or two students and they're fantastic teachers, fantastic practitioners, but they're only reaching one or two people. So I think yeah. that's right out of the gates. I think that's one of the, one of the top benefits for, uh, one of the best, best uh, motivators for, for being good at, good at the business is like, man, I, I want to reach more people. I want to change more lives. I want to help more people be healthy. All, all oh, the yeah. things that, that we love about Capoeira. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. Because just imagine this. Imagine you as a teacher. You, the first five years you're teaching, you kind of like organize yourself, uh, learn how to set up a business, and then all the students, you open your studio. Like, uh, like Mr. Cabezan, he just opened his studio and then he told me like, man, I have like about like 40 people walking in there and total the everybody. I was like, dude, yeah. that's, that's like, what, like six months or something or probably even less. I was like, what the heck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. That's so cool, yep. man. <clears throat> like, like, let me, let me wash it with your own soap and see if I can get the same, man. <laughs> but, yeah. but that's super important for us because mm-hmm. one, he helps his community. Like you said, like to stay healthy, to reach out, to bring more capoeira, to, you know, to to provide a safe environment. Uh, shout out to Mr. Cabezan. And then, uh, but also, there's going to be a point where you can do so much as a as mm-hmm. a as a person, and then you are going to need help with somebody else. And then that's when you mm-hmm. offer employment to somebody else. And then now. Right. You know, you just uh, uh, an employer that is going to help somebody else to to create an income for them, and then hopefully you grow more and keep growing and keep hiring people, and then you know you just help other people with your business. That's at least from from what I think, and and I think that's the important part of the business itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think that's that's one of the uh, glass ceilings that a lot of Capoeira teachers hit is is they get really good at doing the things themselves and this is true for uh my other business is a food business it's it's the same thing and you know mom and pop restaurants and a lot of businesses you get to the point where you do the things really well yourselves but that that's going to cap out at some point and then you really grow beyond that um we had pre-pandemic we had uh a a really booming after school program and uh it started off just me right it's just me but quickly, I already knew that we were going to have to add people. So uh, before the pandemic closed, you know, closed us down and everything, uh, we had uh, 11 staff at the academy, you know? Wow. And so, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 11 people. uh, Most of them were making their their full-time income from the, from the studio. So it wasn't just me and my wife. So Capoeira supported my wife and my two kids since, since we've been here in Florida and supported me full-time when I was single before that. And, uh, but a big, huge part of that is growing your team, you know, yeah. um, and, and developing ways to teach the teacher, uh, you know, how much can you give to someone at different experience levels in their capoeira journey, you know, in terms of like age groups and, and how to do that and, uh, and how to um, have everybody be safe and happy yeah. and, and, and staying true to the art, you know, yeah. which is always super important. Okay. Uh, it's, it's top, 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 you know, there's safety. And then there's true to the art. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, really important. Yeah, man, because he's 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 the the and he's crazy because a lot of people say like, oh, you should be making money with capoeira. It's just like, well, just I always put this example. Mr. Pastinha died very poor, sadly, right? Mm-hmm, he, mm-hmm. Such an important person in capoeira in the capoeira community. Mm-hmm. To these days, after I don't I don't I don't remember the year he died, but after decades he passed. Is mm-hmm. it been decades? I don't remember a year, but after he, he's still coming up, you know, he's he's yeah. such a huge, huge, huge icon in Capoeira. So imagine if he was really good on um the business side, man, right. he 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 will be he will, he will, his family still will be getting money for his for the quote unquote loyalties, you know. Yeah, I think there's a. Uh... I break it down for whenever I'm talking to newer teachers coming up or they're wanting to open a school and they're, they're saying, Hey, Miko, where, where, where should I start? Uh, uh, when I talk to people, I say there, you, you have to kind of divide yourself into three areas or wear three different hats. Yeah. One, you have your own cup with a practice and your own personal journey, right? As a practitioner, you know, you train your moves, you, you work out, you practice your being about, and then you have your your development as a as a teacher, right? Because if you're having a cup with a business, more likely you are a teacher in this business, right? For sure. And that is a separate skill from practicing. They're related. Oh, yeah. Really related, right? But it's different. Yeah. You have to know about learning styles and all the all the things, right? You have to develop a teacher. And that's usually where where people kind of stop. But then there's a third hat, and that's the business hat. Oh yeah. And 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 you really have to think of that as a related to the other two. Uh, but but separate and it's its own skill oh, and yeah. when you you see that it's a skill you can train it just like you do your own movements and music and everything you can train your business skill 
by uh, books. You know, you've got books there. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Talking to other people, taking business workshops, and you you really have to like dedic- really dedicate some time to uh, to building up your your business sense. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he's man, you you have no idea the amazing benefits that you will have as a business owner. You you have mm-hmm. it's so much. You know, you you help your city, you help your state, you help the country, you help people around you. It's just like so many opportunities. And why not use a passion that's something that you love to do and then mm-hmm. becoming a full time? Is I think I think it's a great opportunity right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a business owner, uh, it's different though. A lot of times, um, like when someone's first starting to talk to me, I I almost try to almost talk them out of it or steer, steer them away or at least present the realities too, because oh, yeah. uh, there's a big, big question with entrepreneurship, whatever business it is, you have to ask the question is, do you have what it takes? Yes. You know, and that's, that's a pretty big question, but really yeah. what that comes down to is what's your, uh, what's your comfort level with risk? Yeah. Because there's risk with, with, with a business, you are the owner, yes. you have money, you have uh, legal things, yeah, you know, once you have a staff, you have staff that depend on you. Yeah. And um, you know, when you're leasing a building, you have, you know, legal obligations there. Um, you have time obligations, you have to clean the place, you have to, you know, pay the power bill and stuff. And 100%. and not not everybody at different points in life are ready for that. And I think yeah. that that burns out a lot of people because oh, yeah. they're not really ready for that risk or they're they, you know, and so I think that's a good, a, a great question you have to ask yourself first. Like, are you, how comfortable are you with risk? You know? Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. That was actually one of the things I was thinking on, on, you know, like, uh, thinking about the risk once you, you start opening up the, the business. But we, before we, we start going a little bit further, uh, what, yeah. so people can, can understand, you know, you just like not us just talking because we read a little book. <laughs> You just yeah, like, yeah. Uh, uh, what what is your background of business? What do you do for business? How do you learn for business and things like that? The, the experience that you got. Yeah. So um, uh, I kind of uh, found my way into business ownership, sort of zigzagging. It wasn't something that I originally went to school for um, or anything like that. It it first happened through Capoeira and then nice. developed into other things down down the line. So um, I had my first uh, business identity in Capoeira. I've been working with Capoeira for, um, let's call it uh, maybe 12 or so years uh, before I opened my first uh, business with Capoeira, you know, teaching at rec centers, teaching at my teacher's schools, that type of thing. So building up my own practice, you know, going up in the cords and all that. And then uh, the first business identity that I opened, and this was one of your questions for me uh, and what you messaged me is, you know, yeah. LLC or nonprofit, you know, um, yeah, the yeah, first yeah. one I opened was a, a nonprofit in, in Miami and uh, actually ended up passing that to a friend when I moved out of Miami and it's still going. That oh, nonprofit cool. is still going. Cool. We started that like a long time ago, which is really, really cool. Um, so um I'm really proud of that. Uh, but um, uh, they're very different. Uh, yeah. uh, a regular LLC or nonprofit. I tell yeah. people if you if you have a nonprofit, you basically have two businesses because yeah. you, you still have to run the business like any other business. But then you have all the other regulatory obligations that you have that come with a nonprofit oh, yeah. around reporting and board members and meetings and yeah. uh, minutes from the meetings and all kinds of stuff. So there are benefits, but you almost have to have have two business teams to really make make it worthwhile yeah um so did that that's that's uh started that back in ooh, what was the year it would have been something around 2005 or so oh cool yeah yeah somewhere around there is when we started i don't remember the exact year but around 2005 or so okay and then uh i moved from miami to uh to california to san francisco Okay. And I still operated kind of while I was out there using the same business identity to kind of get started, but then uh, passed that along and, and, and got things going in, in San Francisco. And when I moved out there, I was a single guy. I wasn't married, didn't, didn't have any kids or anything. And I just like jumped on it. And in six months went from not knowing anybody in the city to having 120 students. And Whoa, uh, man, that's crazy. Yeah. We were like, just went, bah, and there's, we can get into that later specifics yeah. of how to make that happen. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a lot of, th- it wasn't, uh, it was a lot of different factors. We'll just leave it that. And we can come yeah. back to that after I kind of go through my experience. Yeah. Um, 
fantastic uh was starting to try to bring people and brought people from brazil to help teach and and continue to grow it even more so cool and then um then got married uh uh when we got pregnant with our first uh first daughter uh, my wife's family my family are, are back in florida so we decided to kind of leave california which yeah. was really hard oh, and, um, <laughs> and that's what brought us back to california or back to florida we've been here for about 10 years oh, cool. and uh and then when we moved back, uh, started an LLC here right out of the gate, right out of the gates, um, and uh, and developed our after school program and summer camp and all of that for the school. Um, and then COVID came, uh, and we decided to close the after school, keep the academy, and because yeah. we weren't sure and stuff was was really crazy and it's just crazy for everybody. Yeah, for and in sure. that that when we decided to pivot. You know, the, the after school was really how we fed the family then, you know. Um, yeah. So uh, birthed the other business, which is uh, Latin inspired ice cream, Feliz. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we're getting ready. We've been open uh, just a little over a year, year and a half. That's and so we're already cool, opening man. our second location. Um, so cool, man. And we have a third coming down the line and a couple other things. So, uh, so yeah, that's my, my business experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, an entrepreneur. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then especially like uh having uh the ice cream at uh, the business. So it's a uh, is learning how to expand out, when to when to open it, where to open it, like study market, because it's not just like you know, it's just like oh I can live here, I'm gonna open yeah. right there. <laughs> it just <laughs> yeah. it, it has to be a reason, you know, it's just a purpose to like okay, you open it there and then mm -hmm. it's a it's a how you call it, uh due diligence that comes behind that. And yep. it's, it's, a, it's a lot of little things that, that we have to be cautious on, on doing it just, just because if we want to make it happen and make it happen on, on, the, on a good way. Absolutely. And, and all those same principles that apply to ice cream absolutely 100% apply to, to Capoeira. They're, oh, yeah. they're not really different. Knowing your target demographic, knowing your your physical location, um, you know if you're if you're opening an academy, uh, things like curb appeal are really important, and a lot of uh, young teachers just don't even think like uh, if there's yeah. a is is the is the, is, the, is the parking lot well lit at night, you know yeah. that's something that can really impact your business. You oh, know yeah. what part of town, you know it depends on on the students you're looking to get, of course, yeah. right? But that yeah. that should should match, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and how close are from highways? How close, you know, how, how accessible it is, how fast it, it, it gets neighborhoods around. Man, it's just so, so many little details that you sometimes, at the, especially at the beginning as a teacher, that we're like, I'm just going to go there and teach there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then you just like, well, I'm not getting students here. It's like, well, you know, there's many factors that are affecting that business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Uh, there's this guy that uh, a lot of people in the Capoeira community uh, really learned from, um, Mago, Messe Mago. And uh, I actually haven't met him in person, but I got advice like secondhand through uh, a couple oh, other right. people about setting up a location. It's something that really impacted me. It was really part of our success out in uh, California and and uh, and here in, in Gainesville is when you're thinking about uh, an academy location, um, you, you map out the city and you think about your target demographic. And yeah. this is what I do with all my projects. I, I get a map and I, I think about my target demographic, where I want to be. And then I, I kind of draw, a, put a pin on the map, like, okay, we want to be here. And then I start looking for, uh, for like rec centers and things like that all around the That's area, so cool, you know, yeah. so that I know that if I get 10 students here at this rec center, um, five students at the ballet school here uh, and I get, you know, 15 at the Taekwondo school that I'm running time slots at, I know that they're all within five miles of that spot. So when I'm ready to open my academy, boom, it's all right there. I don't have to, I'm not on the other side of town that's and so then I lose cool. all those people that I've yeah. been building up, you know? Oh, smart. So, okay. Oh, yeah. That was mine. That was, that was, that was, that was, I got it second. I've never even talked to Mago in person, but I, I got that from another teacher and, and uh, I'm really thankful for that. That, that changed awesome. my life. That's yeah. really, really cool. And then the, the other thing too, you know, like, uh, uh, I don't know about other countries because we live here in America, but mm -hmm. is it the opportunities that we get to do these kind of stuff, these kind of business and, and then actually make a living 
with Capoeira, because you know, in Brazil, it's very hard for, for, for them to open up a business and have a revenue and a, an, an active revenue with, with, with full traffic and then, you know, have a living with Capoeira. And then that's why they, yeah. you know, they move to Europe or they come mm -hmm. to the U.S. It's, it's for a reason. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a blessing for us to definitely, definitely have the opportunity to create a business here in the U.S. and, you know, just, just grow here and have a living here and provide for our families. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm I'm thankful every day uh, for what what I get to do. Um, I work way more hours and way harder than if I were to have like a nine to five job. You know, yeah, I could go out and get a nine to five and have like a secure paycheck. You know, and and probably do pretty okay. Uh, but I wouldn't have control over my own time. That's um, true. I I really uh, actually quit a job um, when I was getting set up in Miami. This is this is when I transitioned from job to having my business when I was in Miami and getting set up there is uh, uh, I had a really easy job that paid okay uh, at a it was, it was an administration position at a hospital um, oh, but cool. I used up all my vacation for for traveling for batizados <laughs> and uh, and then I wanted to go to another one and you know I was like no I don't I, you know it's unpaid time off it's no problem all my work yeah. is done here it's all set there's no there's no problems i wasn't just yeah. leaving and they just said no you can't you don't have any more vacation time i was like oh no but it's okay i don't want to get paid i understand that uh and my work is done yeah, yeah. so i want to go to the event They're like no sorry you can't i was like okay i quit <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, man, i can't that's do that crazy usually like, but well, it was great peace out. <laughs> yeah just peace out like yeah yeah but that that was the the thing that pushed like okay and then you know right now it's on me to to get yeah, the students yeah. So that, that was your motivation. That's crazy. That the motivation behind that was like, you know, I just want to have the freedom of my own time. Yeah. Yeah. Control my time. That's, that's the most important thing to me these days. It's, uh, I really don't even look at, um, you know, uh, my income so much. I look at the revenue of the businesses that, that okay. I have, but my own personal income is really, I, it's below secondary what i what what's important to me is is uh is my time you know control sure. my time be able to do things like this like yeah have a podcast you know exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. and you know like uh, at the at the moment is you probably not making a huge huge revenue but you know you that income from capoeira is also helping you to open your business and then your other business yeah. you side you side business and then you know whoever knows what was from there yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I'm, uh, in in a pretty cool spot right now because Capoeira has um really it was really interesting. Uh, I didn't really think Capoeira would be able to support my family after we closed the after school program. That's uh, but we made some some changes, and uh, now the academy without an after school program, which yeah. uh, I don't know of of many academies in the United States um, can do this. Uh, it supports my family of four. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't live like we don't have a huge house or anything like that. But, uh, you know, my wife and I both have a car. My kids um, get to go to gymnastics, you know. So cool, uh, man. Yeah. We have like kind of like that nice middle class life. Yeah. Um, but we, we don't have the after school program, which is really, really nice because um, after school is tough. You know, just every, anyone that's worked in it knows how tough it is. And usually in Capoeira, we do this to to support the dream of being able to work with Capoeira. But yeah, it's, it's hard. But um, but yeah, so the 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 academy is at a place where it's 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 covering you know our stuff for yeah. our family and and so for for the other business the ice cream uh i get to just kind of just it takes a lot of pressure off a lot of weight off and i can just keep reinvesting 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 yeah no that's awesome man that's awesome and then but you also grew all that because you know the 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 strategies you had to have food traffic and to have you know that that people come into your to your classes and have students and grow your school, and then yep. the 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 pretty much the revenue because that becomes a revenue for for the capoeira schools, which is is the core of our, or, or of our school because without that we don't have uniforms, without that we don't have the space, without that yep. you know you you don't have employees, and then is is a super super key important for us. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's two sides. It's, it's what comes in and then, and then what goes out, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. And, and so both are, are super important. Um, 
what, what comes in, we've, we've been able to automate a lot. Uh, so it takes uh, the time commitment off. We, we do everything through our website as far as registrations. Okay, uh, we cool. automate uh, a, lot of our, a lot of our marketing. Um, so we, uh, we've never been shy in spending on, on marketing. We spend quite a bit. And yeah. I think that's, that's another glass ceiling that I see a lot of cup with a teacher cup with a business owners have is, is they're a little scared to, to spend on the marketing. And, uh, when everybody was telling me I was nuts for how much I was spending to market our summer camps and our after school, um, uh, we were, we were spending tons of money there yeah. and it, it comes back, you know, it's yeah. a nice thing about. Our, our business with Capoeira is really cool is once you get that student, um, I kind of count when I'm doing, running my numbers, I count uh, for a year. I think of that student in terms of like on the revenue side. I don't look at my students as dollar signs. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I yeah, don't. Yeah, no, I really no, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the business, running the business, right? Uh, because when you get that student, more than likely, they're going to be with you for for uh, for a while, right? So yeah, I, I kind of yeah, look at it sure. like a year. So we'll call it like a hundred bucks a month that every school charges something different. We can talk about pricing strategies yeah. and everything too. Yeah. Um, but uh, the nice thing about Capwit is that once you get them, you've got them for a while. So yeah. if I have to spend, uh, you know, $500 on advertising, but it gets me two students, right? $500 and I get two students off of that. A lot of Capwit teachers say you're nuts. You just spent $500 on ads. But if I get two students and they're each paying a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Uh, then uh, that's twelve hundred dollars for the year from each of them. I just made twenty four hundred dollars. You exactly. know, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It yeah. cost me five hundred, but then it's not just twenty four hundred dollars yeah. because we all know word of mouth is the best way, right? Yeah. So those two students, if we do a good job, are probably like probably they're going to bring somebody bring one more. Yeah, yeah, one exactly. more, two more, and then those people are going to bring somebody, right? And then, and then six, six, oh yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. A and the other, ripple effect. Exactly, exactly. And then one thing that's really helped us in our in our own school is we create feeder programs within our own school. So we have multiple revenue streams inside our own school. So we've got a preschool program oh, that damn, feeds into yeah. That, we have we actually have a, we we brought our top program back. Uh, we uh, we used so to have tots right. before. Then pandemic, we didn't have tots. Now we've got tots again. We don't do it as much as we did before. But the tots, when they age up, they become preschoolers. Preschoolers age up, they become elementary. And then from there, middle school is a whole other thing, man. I, if anybody has secrets about how to get middle school students, please let me know because <laughs> I don't know anybody that's figured that out. But then um, what you have is those students, and this is becoming a larger portion of our, of our revenue at our schools, those, all those kids, they have parents. Yeah. And then those parents, we really market to the parents a lot more now. Yeah, so sure. we have multiple feet and then they 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 feed this way too like the parents have a friend that has a kid so my 500 bucks just goes like goes really All really far place yeah. yeah oh yeah for yeah. sure man because he's, he's just like the the like uh there was a there's a parent from like i not too recent ago my capoeira class my kids class we were three kids and then mm -hmm. and then we have four kids And then all of a sudden now we are eight kids <laughs> yeah. just because, yeah, because yeah. it spreads the voice. And then when you're at yeah. the end of the year, there's, we have two demonstrations uh, for, for the studio where I teach. Uh, that's at the beginning of the year for me. And then at the end of the year for, for like December. So we have like those, like the Christmas break and the spring break. And yeah. for that time, we do uh, just do a little demonstration with the kids and somebody always like, Oh yeah, that's so cool. And then, They just end up asking me like, how, oh, how is the class? And then, you know, just join us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, around, uh, demos and, and presentations. That's, that's something that I do pretty different from a lot of Capoeira schools. Um, oh yeah. You know, the, the common thing is like, oh, you got to go out and do a lot of demos. You got to do demos and things yeah. like that. I do zero demos that's ever. Crazy. Yeah. If I do a demo, I don't do it to get students. I do it for the experience of bringing students together, whether it's kids or adults. And it's their chance to give them like a motivator to let maybe practice to improve to their skill or and, to yeah. show off. Yeah. That's But I don't so do it cool, to, to get students. And because they, they take a lot of time. If you put that pressure on your students, uh, especially over and over and over again, and, and you're kind of yeah. using your students as like a, 
as a marketing tool, they, they start to feel that, you know, like, yeah, oh, I'm just true, like, true. I can see that just, just getting using me to sign up new students. And, um, and I mean, I think demo, demonstrations are fantastic. I don't think they're, they're, I don't think people should not do them. I just, uh, for me, I don't think, uh, it works so well to do them as a marketing tool. For I sure, like to yeah, click up with outside it. and then that, that becomes marketing. Right. But it's yeah. not a, uh, a show and other people have other other experiences with this and and some people sure. do very very well with it and everything this is just my my approach um yeah you know right. and this you, this approach has worked for me yeah yeah for sure like like uh i think it was uh one time i saw on on a workshop with mr paul lamp uh mm -hmm. and he was like you know like nobody has the truth on their hands he's what he's just that's a good thing we were talking about at the beginning you know you we have so many we have a huge fan of possibility you know you there's no right way or wrong way to do it just like if it works for you just go that way <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 for sure for sure i like that and then there was a point for you where like you said at the beginning you started and then started as a as a hobby where you like were uh practicing and all that and then after hobby became into uh, how you call this um profession the profession yes in the end then it came to to a full time and then after that and then from hobby to full time to now opening up the business and then how how do you scale that section now when when do you know that was where you say like hey you know like it's actually getting pretty big i think it's, it's time for me to to start a business yeah uh so uh there, there's two perspectives there's the perspective i had when I was much younger and didn't know as much, you know, and then <laughs> there's my perspective no now <laughs> where, where, you know, like I, I can give, you know, the experience having gone, gone through that because they're pretty different, you know, that's um, a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. In the beginning and, uh, and, and this type of energy is, is needed for any type of entrepreneurs is the, uh, you can't wait for the perfect time to, to make the Very jump, point. you know, yeah. you, you really have to jump when it's in perfect because it's never going to be perfect ever. Yeah, Not, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much research you've done. There's still going to be a reason why it's not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. There's a hurricane coming, yeah. you know, your dog is sick. The pandemic. <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, it, and when you're at different stages, uh, um, you're, you're doing different things. You're working with different numbers. You're working with different, uh, risk levels, you know? Um, so, uh, so for me, um, it was just, I really loved Capoeira and, uh, I really loved having the freedom to travel and just, you yeah. know, having my, you know, all day long, just, just being steeped in it, you know? And so, uh, the first time I, I, I opened a school, uh, was in Tallahassee. And it was a uh, it was a warehouse um, condo thing with a roll up metal door, and mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was on the other side of town from from my teacher uh, Messe Araya, and uh, I had just got my instructor core, and I was like, all right, yep, I'm gonna open a school now. He's and it was it was know, yeah, it was a, it was a it was a partnership, you know, it wasn't like it wasn't wasn't we I went to the other side of the the town, and you know, the two schools were gonna operate there together, and uh, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't <laughs> have very much money. Um, but, uh, but That's I managed to get we some, started. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I found a cheap warehouse. Um, and I, I put some mats on the floor and, uh, do we have Messe Picanese there for, oh, for a workshop? Crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. This was back in, uh, it was before nine 11. So like, I think you, you, I, I think that was in 2000, year 2000. Whoa. That's sick. Yeah. Man. It was pretty nuts. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, um, that was pretty, pretty insane. It was just like this small little, little place, you know? And then, uh, yeah, now though, um, you know, if you have some more money saved up, you can kind of think about your numbers a little bit more. Yeah. Um, the danger about having more money saved up is that sometimes you get a little more guarded too, you know, that's true. Yeah. You get like, you know, your first school you open, you know, with, with like, if you have $5,000, you're like, yeah, this is like, great you know i, I managed to scrounge together five thousand dollars yeah cool let's do it you know but once you got like you know a couple of tens of thousand dollars saved up for your for your next venture whatever say you have yeah. fifty thousand dollars sometimes tendencies to get like a little scared because like oh yeah. man that's 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 more money now if i lose five thousand 
okay, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. If you lose 50,000, you get a little more scared. So, yeah. Um, yeah. One thing that helped me get through all that uh, and continues to help me get through all that is, is something called uh, fear setting. Oh, cool. um, okay. Yeah. So everybody knows goal setting, right? Like yeah. set my goals and visualize. But uh, fear setting comes out of, out of uh, the philosophy of stoicism, which oh. I've become super steeped and avid about. Um, but this idea of visualizing everything that could go wrong yeah. and uh, really just trying to put yourself sometimes even like, oh, I'm worried I'm going to lose my house. So go sleep out in a tent, you know, and, okay. and see what it feels like. And then you're like, OK, well, it's not that bad. I'm still alive. And if that happens, I'll do this, 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 this. And so you have a plan of, OK, if if this does go wrong, yeah. you know, what would I do next? And then you see it's not that bad. And then it helps you take that risk of like, OK, yeah, I'll. I'll I'll put my money down or I'll go, you know, I'll, I'll sign that lease and put the deposit or, or whatever. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being part of this episode one more time. And thank you so much for being part of the Capoeira community. I'm very happy you made it all the way to the end. Now, make sure you listen to the next episode next week or the following week or the previous episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and don't forget to reach out so we can have you on the podcast. Okay. Thank you so much for being part of this amazing journey in the Capoeira community. And I really, really hope to see you one time here in Indianapolis or I'll see you in the hot next time. Okay. Keep training, keep your Capoeira school, keep supporting your Capoeira school and keep training, keep loving Capoeira, keep training, keep training keep playing the hot. I'll see you in the hot next time. Peace.